Ma'am, excuse me po. Ma'am, Ma- mag-start pa lang po tayo. Mayong hapon sa tanan. This is how we greet in Mindanao. Magandang hapon po sa lahat. Good afternoon everyone. At the onset, I would like to express my gratitude. Allow me to grab this moment. Uh, thank you so much for uh, having me here in this virtual uh, review, particularly a refresher review, particularly on the LED competencies, uh, specifically in this subject, developmental reading. Hey, can uh, you allow me now um, to uh, share my screen? Okay, so I think uh, I'm now, uh, the screen is now visible. I am now audible this time. Um, thank you so much also Sir Ken and Sir Mon for the invite. Um, I'm so excited to share and to learn with you, future teachers, our frontliners in education. I am Jeanette Gungora, your session or your review session facilitator today. I am a faculty of teacher uh, development, uh, PNU Mindanao. Okay, so we know that uh, we cannot undermine the significance, the importance of reading, right? Reading is a skill that is useful throughout life. It is one of the most important skills that an individual needs to learn in order to progress academically, um, professionally, and uh, even in all angles uh, of human's life. Reading promotes confidence of an individual in a modern society. It enables people to act creatively and critically in an ever-changing and highly competitive world like what we are having now. Now, So it provides rapid access to new information and knowledge that will be very significant in achieving lifelong learning, right? Okay, so hopefully that this um, reading uh, importance, rapid, ready access a uh, novel information just like uh, the COVID-19 virus will be really uh, rapid. No? Uh, that, um, uh, shall we say, novel information and even um, factual 
na, and uh, correct information and um, novel and new information that would help us to actually grow that only personally but even professionally uh, will be at our own hand, na, at our own uh, uh, tip of our finger. So it needs actually to hit the competencies that we want to target this afternoon. We have two components um, to be targeted or to be mastered in having this um, uh, developmental reading. The first component is the teacher as a reader and the second component is the reading teacher. We know that the teacher or a teacher, regardless of his specialization, regardless of his or her majorship, needs to be the teacher as a reader. And that through using activities that enhance critical, creative, and metacognitive reading skills. So we need to target the 21st century skills, right? So um, as we hunt, as we mold the efficient and effective readers, na, our learners, we ourselves being the teachers, the providers, uh, not only the sage of the stage, but even the guide in side, we needed to be the teacher as a reader effectively through having all of these skills. And the second component, the reading teacher, we needed to analyze extrinsic and intrinsic factors that affect a reading performance. While we are a reading teacher ourselves, I can associate this one also um, being a research teacher as we will be needing um, empirical data, not only personal experiences and even information, but we have to gather uh, that um, correct information and empirical data from our own classroom maybe or class home this time yeah, or our virtual class. And we needed to analyze and to examine uh, all the problems in order for us to um, ensure solutions um, or responses to those challenges, right? Okay, so as I mentioned earlier that uh, we have to refresh ourselves, the inputs that we had in our baccalaureate subjects, even our schema, even our reading um, learnings through reading the text or any material, uh, these are all helpful for us to refresh and even to review all of those concepts. Okay, I know that it's good to start with a mind teasing activity, although I cannot see right now your answers, but I think you can have in the chat panel or in that um, uh, FB, you can have actually the words that you can see, you know, or you can first three words that you see in this puzzle generator. You know what? I was uh, stricken by this post uh, from Vasolis because uh, when they posted this one um, at the onset of the year 2022, so it made me also join uh, and get uh, my interest in having those three first three words. Okay, so good luck for having that. And according to them, uh, although that could be only a coincidence, that the first three words will be really embraced by you, will be your priority, and will be given by the universe to you in this year. Okay, so good luck for that. Okay, so yes, going deeper to our discussion, um, giving of input uh, this afternoon, may I start uh, with the characteristic of an effective and efficient uh, teacher being a reader teacher, the thinking teacher reader, right? Okay, so as I uh, mentioned earlier again, that regardless our specialization, it's not because because we are language teachers, these are uh, only our role, no? only our duties uh, to have this efficient and effective reading to our learners and to our, um, shall we say, students and pupils. No, it should be every teacher's responsibility. Yeah? And uh, with that, we need to have this thinking teacher reader a trait now and how are we going to have that one and be active purposeful it's good to see the purpose the objective of what you are doing of what you are having as an activity you need to be organized and you need to be very systematic now the way you have uh, all of these activities it uh, doesn't uh, need to be very cerebral 
yeah it should fit and suit to your learners um activities or to your learners styles of learners learning and to your learners ability right so uh you should have this one in mind be improved by doing the following becoming aware of one's thinking process remember the metacognition metacognitive process thinking about that thinking right carefully examining one's thinking process and the thinking process of others not only your own thinking process but of course how do your learners how do your um students actually think about a particular uh, for example uh, topic no a particular learning session okay and uh, for this letter b carefully examining one's thinking process you might be embracing the what we call um uh, reflective pedagogy no? this is not new but somehow it is given an emphasis during this time as we need to reflect our own way of teaching our own way of delivering uh, lessons no? what went wrong during my discussion what went well so of course those um, needed um, to be improved will be uh, given much attention for you to improve your performance in teaching then we have practicing one's thinking abilities. Na? We have to practice, put into action what we have planned and what we have thought of. Okay, the second one, to think critically a teacher reader. Again, we have here critical thinking. Yeah, so, um, aside from being organized, purposeful, and active in uh, thinking, you have also this um, critical thinking. Yeah? And uh, you needed to be very creative. You needed to think outside the box. It should be or it could be a cliche part. However, this is very realistic. Sometimes we succumb um, in what is uh the norm no or sometimes we are very confident to do uh in our comfort zone however uh, i know that uh, you are more than what you are thinking you could actually think more and you can actually act more creatively no? because we believe that we are all creative uh, thinkers and of course teachers Okay, so how are we going to hit our critical thinking skills by, of course, rationalization, reasoning, uh, coupled with, um, shall we say, uh, facts no? through research? I am always um, imbibing. I am always also integrating research here as this is very important in the field of uh, reading also, right? Okay, and then we have um, evaluating, problem solving, decision making, and analyzing. And as you see, this is cyclical because it is not linear. It should be in a cyclical form. One process, one stage, one phase uh, could be... Um, taken place and then the other will also do the same no? or they could be in a non-linear structure they are not structured linear um, in a linear way but a non-linear way so that is cyclical and we have also this mentoring mind we need also to collaborate yeah so we have this uh, kind of um shall we say pedagogy is not anymore uh the name of the game this time what i mean is that it should be paired with pedagogy it should be paired with eutagogy no? so pedagogy we need to uh, collaborate we need to teach also to our students that they can learn through having small uh, group discussion even virtually no? and they can learn within or among their peers examine no? so use variety of methods in order to explore to analyze and communicate communication is very important then adapt resistance to change somehow inhibited us to grow yeah, um, inhibited us to perform well and to perform better and uh, the one that i've mentioned a while ago reflect in core it is in the essence of being inquisitive that we learn more right and create there yeah so having all of those uh, backup knowledge that we can have then we can create and even recreate we can use all of those information to create something new something novel yeah, right and that is uh, that could be very customized even personalized um 
or shall we say um invented by you no? so um newly invented by you no? and it needs uh, to be shared to others too the culture of sharing right yes link it is very important nowadays to collaborate to link to connect now uh, while we are having physical distance but we cannot be virtually distant we can we have to connect and to link and strive to be better right and uh strive not only to be good in teaching but even in learning now, as we know that learning um teaching process go together they cannot be separated they cannot be annulled and we needed to do the same, go learning with our students too. To think creatively, a teacher reader, so we have to discover new or improved solution, organize ideas in different ways, not be inhibited by conformity, the normal scene. Na? Ano kaya yung masasabi ng iba if I am doing this one? Um, that is why you are inhibited to try new things. Na? And even censorship, right education, and desire to find an answer quickly. Okay, so... Um, we have all of these processes, no? uh, creative thinking skills. You can be very analytical too, open-minded, problem solvers. I think I have mentioned that one already. And um, you need to have concrete thinking, abstract thinking, and concrete thinking. No? And the fourth one, a teacher reader practice skills in metacognition by being aware of one's mental processes. Having been, being, uh, having been said a while ago, no, I want to emphasize this one. Practicing self-regulation and monitoring comprehension by answering the following questions. Are there any words I don't understand? No? So um, you as teacher, you don't really get uh, the meaning of these words because it's too foreign. Now, uh, you need to contextualize this one when you have to teach this one to our students. The more that our students will find difficulty now, in uh, deciphering and understanding the meaning of these words. Is there any information that doesn't agree with what I already know? Is this back up with research? Mayroon ba niya sa that negate this kind of information? Meron ba nag-affirm more? Are there any ideas that do not fit together because I can tell who or what is being talked about? So you are practicing. You are actually uh, putting in action what you are thinking, right? Okay. Some reading concepts a teacher reader has to be familiar. Of course, uh, we have the constructivist view of comprehension. We know that the act of making sense or constructing meaning of the text is what we call comprehension. Reading. Without comprehension is nothing. As we know, we are only decoding and identifying letters or words. But deep inside, we don't know what uh, is the meaning of this word. Now, what is the essence of this particular text of a material? Factors that affect comprehension. What the reader brings to the reading situation. Of course, now we have to know the developmental stages, the milestones, the background experience, knowledge of subject, vocabulary, purpose, and even motivation. Motivation is one important thing as we know that learning from screen I'm talking about our students, our learners, and even we ourselves teaching from screen where you cannot see, where you cannot actually uh, even touch uh, your students or knowing your students, what are they doing no? while um, you are having your teaching? Maybe they are no longer listening to you. They're already sleeping, right? Okay. So the characteristics of the written text, print, or even uh, non-print material. No? Nowadays, we needed to be very flexible in the way we have all of these reading materials. Okay, Content, format, readability, concepts, organizations, author purpose. So may I situate this one for having our module? Um, yeah, in the basic education because of uh, gadget or technology problem, um, our dear teachers in the department still print it. Now, with that module, but of course, in higher education, we have to migrate um, all of those um, materials in an online mode or in a virtual um, scheme, right? Okay, the learning context. What about the situation? What about the background that defines the task and the purpose of the reader, the reading situation? We need to, to have that one too. Why is it that my student, my learner, no matter how I try to teach, uh, him or her still doesn't know how to read, doesn't um, learn how to comprehend such text. Now, so can you um, look at also the situation, um, not only 
uh, the the educational situation of the student, but maybe economically and all aspects. Na? Uh, is that student or learner has a time to read? Are they reading materials in the school or in the in the home rather, right? Okay, is there someone who will be guiding him or her to read? Okay, setting, task, environment, and of course the outcomes, uh, the output, the product. Right. Um, as we know that we are very uh, familiar with the outcomes based already, we needed to have product based or we needed to have performance based. The strategies also matter. Now it should be applied by the reader to obtain meaning. So we ourselves, while we are teaching with strategies, the learners being readers also need to have learner strategies. Strategy is a systematic plan, consciously adapted and monitored to improve one's performance and learning. Okay, so while we are talking about comprehension, we need it to be very strategic. The way we um, deliver our lessons, even in modular form, um, in virtual or in remote, uh, in digital uh, scheme, we need to be strategic, right? Okay, in order for us to solicit and ensure that there is really comprehension, there is really that connection. Um, the, uh, we have... Uh, Yes, um, communication, connection with the students. These are very important too. So uh, while we are, um, we need to understand all of this. Now, uh, we need to have all of this uh, strategies into different milestones, into different phases, just like preparational strategies. Now, so previewing, activating prior knowledge, setting purpose and goals, predicting. Yeah, and when you prepare, you need to activate the prior knowledge. Motivation is the key then. The elaboration strategies are making inferences, imaging, generating questions, evaluating. The challenge is how to sustain yeah, the attention of uh, those learners or those students. And by evaluating, critical reading uh, will be introduced, will be given to your uh, students, right? The organizational strategies, comprehending the main idea, what is the, the main point, what is the gist, the meaty part of this text, and then what are those supporting details that actually the, the auxiliary details and information that support that main idea, determining important details, and of course, organize, uh, organizing details, right? So these are all um, uh, strategies in order for us to organize our thoughts in uh, presenting and even in comprehending and we have also in reporting, uh, as we know that uh, after the discussion, we needed to have the reporting, the presentation. Metacognitive strategies, regulating, checking, repairing, and even evaluating. Uh, so as I mentioned a while ago, reflecting is um, a key term. Also, we needed to, um, shall we say, we needed to embrace uh, reflective pedagogy, meaning then that we teachers need to be reflective pedagogues. Right. OK, so uh, aside from having all of those milestones, for example, having all of those comprehension strategies, we need also to refresh our ideas about reading theories. Yeah, and this is not I know the first time you uh, heard about bottom up, uh, top bottom and interactive reading theories. So when I say bottom up, it depicts reading starting with the input of some graphic signals or stimulus. So this starts with uh, the very minute thing about um, the text, the sounds, even the formation of the letters that form syntactic form of the words that form into a paragraph, into a text, into a passage, a discourse. Now, all of this uh, be considered, be minded in order for us to get the very essence of the text or the material. This is also called data-driven processing because every bit of the information, every details you need to be mindful of. Right, so called because it focuses on developing the basic skill of matching sounds, uh, syllables, and words. Nah? So, even the vocabulary, 
Okay. So kung sa Visaya, yung aming uh, langgam ay lumilipad na sa inyo ay uh, gumagapang pa no? sa, sa mga uh, Tagalog o sa, sa Tagalozon. So uh, we need to have that because even uh, the spelling are the same, langgam. No? Um, the child needs to have this vocabulary enrichment in order for the student, uh, for the pupils or learners to use that one correctly in a context. Progressing from small or subordinate units, and it, this is an approach, a problem that begins with details. Na? So, very maditalya siya, data-driven processing. And uh, the second one is top-down. This is the opposite of uh, the previous uh, presented um, reading theory. It depicts reading beginning with the cognitive processes occurring in the reader's mind as he or she reads. The role of the reader here is to give meaning to the text based on the information already held within the readers because of that schemata theory or that prior knowledge. Ah, I think I know this one already because I've read about the story of Beowulf. So I think an epic, I know this, so I can associate this one here. So maybe this is the meaning of this entirety of the whole text. Yeah? So readers can comprehend the selection even though they do not recognize its word. Yeah? So um, he has this full grasp of uh, the, in, uh, the meaning of the text. Readers should use meaning and grammatical cues to identify and recognize words. See, you have mentioned here grammar, you know, the grammar rules, and even the grammatical entities, cues. It can give us hint in order for us to understand or to decipher a meaning of that text. Reading for meaning is the primary objective of reading rather than the mastery of letters or sound. So the reading for meaning is your main point, is your main priority for top-down. Okay, so which means then that this top-down is concept uh, giving, processing, right? Okay, and we have interactive reading model. This actually reading is a process of constructing meaning through the dynamic interaction among the reader's existing knowledge, information suggested by the reading language, and the context of the reading situation, which means then that it recognizes the interaction of bottom-up and top-down processes. Okay, it uh, somehow... Uh, integrate the two reading models, bottom-up and the, the top-down model. Reading is an active process that depends on readers' characteristics, text, and the reading situation. It attempts to combine, the, shall we say, the valid insights, the advantages of both bottom-up and the top-down uh, top models. Okay, so... Equally important also is to know what are those phases or stages of reading development. So we have stage one, emergent literacy. When we say emergent literacy, this starts from the birth to five years na? as uh, the foundational um, years of every learner or a child. That is why it is very significant that there is a strong foundation of learning na, for the child to have uh, not only in formal education, um, in the school or even in the class home, but even um, the way the parents who said to be our um, first teachers in the home needed to have that um, good and meaningful opportunities to be given to the learning children or the learning child. Stage two, early reading, kindergarten and first grade. So formal discussion is already given, formal, uh, shall we say, intervention even is already given or mga, um, opportunities and um, different uh, reading activities. Na? Stage four, reading to learn grades four through six. So as you see, we have already elementary students, or people's rather. And stage five, abstract reading, grade seven and up. Na? And uh, sometimes a teacher forgets maybe the age or the stages of reading development of a child. So uh, because of maybe the excitement of a teacher that she wants to uh, have her learner to read fast no? or to read directly the, the, the text, maybe we forgot or maybe there are there were instances that we tend to forget um, that they are still on those uh, stages. 
na? and uh, we overlook that one. Although there are really advanced uh, readers or learners, however, sometimes there are those students who are really having their own pace. And we need to respect that. We need only to guide that. We need to scaffold. No? We need to um, give, uh, as I said, the activities in order to improve, uh, shall we say, the reading performance of that child or learner. But we don't have to coerce uh, with that certain child because there are also certain development uh, that each child is unique of having, right? Okay. So, yes, look at the, in this diagram. As you see, we have the home family as the center, the nuclear part of the diagram, having all of those early literacy um, or early education uh, in the home or at home. And then we have teacher, uh, we have the school having the formal uh, education. And then we know that um, by this reading progress, the reading skill or the reading of um, reading ability of the child progresses, uh, we head to towards academic achievement. Now, and that when a child knows already how to read and even comprehend there is what we call self-esteem uh, that or confidence that are developed in a certain child right reading interests of children and that when reading habit is established of a certain child then he or she um, has to has to find or make time in order for him or her to read something whether it could be print or non-print now, and then we have uh, the part of uh, the parents and the home. There you have home literacy, atmosphere, and experiences, right? We need to give all of those opportunities for our children to learn. Sometimes it's not really that um, formal teaching or coaching to our little kids, but um, opportunities. Now, for example, in the digital uh, scheme or digital way so there are many apps actually but we need also to be warned with the um, overused uh, you the overused uh, gadget exposure na, and even technology so okay sometimes uh, we need to have this moment ah, as long as you learn that one then i need to help do anything in order for me to free in guiding you no and that should that be language use or support in the community of course now our community is an important factor also for a reading child to have his full grasp of a reading skill yeah? there are those communities in the terminal for example while um waiting for the vehicle for the transportation they are having a reading nook they are having a reading corner for the children or even uh, for adults to read something while they are waiting for the buses right and that is a good uh, initiative okay so this is considered as the stage of unconventional reading and writing mostly influenced by environmental prints who are those in the environmental sphere so we belong there no so parents, teachers, siblings, and the like. It's a community. Children move from learning primarily through direct sensory contact and physical manipulation to using an intuitive kind of logic to form concrete concepts, according to Garing 2000, uh, 2003. As you see, this is also in um, accordance with the, the, shall we say, the idea of uh, Piaget. No? So sensory, uh, even Montessori, manipulative um, sensory contact and experiences by uh, the students, okay, or by the uh, learners or the kids. Theories that support emergent lit uh, literary or literacy, rather. No? Sorry for the spelling, it should be literacy. Rousseauian or Rousseau, no? uh, John uh, Jax or Jacques Rousseau, um, as you see, he said that child's efforts are to be honored and to be recognized. Na? Let him play. Uh, when you teach science, uh, for example, the child might uh, be forgetting that one. But when you let the child keep in touch with that science, for example, he will not. No, he will not forget the concepts that he will be uh, learning, which means then that there will be learning by doing, learning by exposure in the part of the child, right? Okay, I remember the Chinese old proverb, tell me and I will forget, no? but show to me um, 
Let me demonstrate. Let me do that one and I will remember. Okay. Piagician stance emphasizes that children is an active constructor of literacy through interactions with the environment. That, as mentioned a while ago, that your child also learns in her own or his own um, pace. Na? Um, as long as there you have uh, the meaningful opportunities and activities to be given to the child. Vygotsky, as you know, social interaction is very important na? between a literate adult or the more knowledgeable others and the young child. Na? So remember uh, the scaffolding, na? the Zoom um, ZPD, na, uh, theory of Vygotsky, claiming that the children acquire literacy through conversations and purposeful engagement in literacy events. And Barley, um, remember, schemata theory, this is authored by Barley, children interpret events, situations, information based on previously learned events, situations, and information. Okay, so we need also to understand and let our students and learners acquire this uh, competencies or skills in the emergent literary period. Background of experiences, language facility. That is why it's very important that the child has this talking community. No? Because if the child uh, is exposed only or is uh, the child stays only to a very silent community, a very silent um, background, no? what will happen to the language exposure of the child? I remember my child, um, my kid, grade four now, he's already 10 years old now, but he has actually um, late shall I say, development of his uh, speech uh, language uh, skills, no? because um, his yaya, actually his uh, caregiver, is very silent, very silent type, and um, nobody will be talking or would be talking to my child uh, within the day because I had my work and my husband too. No? So, but then... Um, I, he was exposed to a certain gadget, no, that Barney thing, that uh, virtual friends, uh, digital friends, so to speak, the cartoons. That is why the very first language of my child is not uh, our native tongue. It's actually English. But then I needed to um, expose him um, with the kind of speaking community also that speaks my language, that speaks our L1 or the first uh, or our native language in order for my child not to be alienated or to be strangers in his own language, right? Okay, and that is one of the problems of MPBML this time. Uh, so we need to understand those backgrounds. Interest in reading. I'm so happy that I uh, taught him that um, interest or motivation to read, uh, that love of, uh, for reading and the first set of his books um diary of a wimpy kid i think he had uh, he has 18 to 20 books and uh, he read the one completely yeah? so see uh this physical book this hardbound book are still, although not in trend this time, but still I find this one more, shall we say, more enticing for me to read. And even I want my child to have those books as a sort of investment. No? Although information could be uh, right in our screen, however, iba pa rin talaga pa yung mga books na hinahawakan, right? Social and emotional development. We need also to... Um, let our, our child understand the, the value of reading, no? the, the value of habit formation uh, to have this reading. Physical development, let our child uh, learn through plays and fun-filled activities. Iba? Remember, not letting John play will make John a dull boy. Ika nga, no? And uh, we have uh, this intelligence. No? Still, the cognitive ability of a child also matters. However, may I uh, say that there are those who are, uh, shall we say in our layman's term, um, 
late bloomer na or maybe gra- um, not that fast not gradual yung uh, cognitive development nila na? so um yeah those students with uh, dyslexia for example na those students with dyscalculia inability to understand the uh, calculation or mathematics concepts dyslexia na um of course that um difficulty in understanding um difficulty in learning a particular subject maybe in reading na? and this graphia for writing na? so all of those difficulties and even we have that cognitive processing disorder na? so for some students with special needs okay beginning reading who are the beginning readers kinder to grade one as we know anyone who have not been taught the conventional reading which means then that um even uh shall we say tarzan who was exposed only in uh the woods world yeah and was not able to be given an opportunity to read and that uh, he's already old and then that's the first time that he was given such uh book for example and uh being taught to read then uh, it could be anyone problem solvers yeah so we are even uh, reading beginning reading problem solvers because we wanted to no, um, find solutions in every problem in reading no? so when we solve this particular challenge we need to find another solution to a sprouting emerging problems reading problems needing plenty of opportunities for choice motivated through novelty retaining information better if given a chance to master a few things well needing time for learning bringing more than an empty shell to school the one i have mentioned a while ago our learners are students of course with special needs or shall we say uh, difficulties now we needed much time um to let them be guided by us na? and by having this wide and open-minded perception about uh, these kinds of learners uh, i don't want to label them no it's, it's quite stigmatizing however um the world of special education uh, has this term no? um, students with special needs or with um, learning disabilities maybe Yes. What is the right time to teach beginning reading? A child is never totally ready to unready to read. You would say five years old na siya, uh, or during five year old na yan sa tuturuan ng pagbasa, no? Very early naman yung zero or ten months old. Yeah. So anytime, no? uh, totally ready to unready to read. When learners have achieved unity of their capabilities, now there are those. Um, readers or there are those who are very young no? at the age of five months uh, maybe those who have already developed their uh, speaking or their language facility uh, started to read already right okay what are the components of research-based program for teaching beginning reading so we need also as future teachers you will be future teachers so as you see while you understand the psychology of developmental reading we need also to um tickle our mind to have this uh research-based program for teaching beginning reading or shall we say even remedial reading um intervention uh, activities too or as our way or ways in order to solve problems provide children with opportunities i always author the one no? give them meaningful opportunities extend their use and appreciation of spoken language when they will do even singing even um even when they do bubbling at the very early stage, it's okay, na? Kahit may mga saliva na in the mouth, that is part of the process. Expand their use and appreciation of printed language, na? So, uh, maybe if they have already plenty of having toys, why not give a book, na? So, I think uh, they will start to appreciate uh, this printed um materials na? and they will be developing that language as you see that reading is of course now a receptive language and uh, speaking is a productive one together with the, the 
um, writing. Eh? And once we are having a very good uh, listening skill also and ability eh? and reading uh, skills, then we could more likely have productive uh, skills no? or effective productive skills. Practice accurate and fluent reading in decodable stories. Read and comprehend a wide assortment of books and other texts. I know everything uh, is known by you, is learned by you. However, I, I think we need to freshen up with all of this because along our ways as we deal with our children and our uh, learners, even our own kids, we forgot this minute but very important details no? in guiding our children in order for them to read in their reading journey. Okay, so develop and comprehend new vocabulary through wide reading and direct vocabulary instruction. So it could be direct or even indirect. Na, a vocabulary instruction. What is this? Na? So, synonyms of this word, pretty, is beautiful. What about antonym of this word, big? Na? So, the exact opposite. They need to understand that. Learn and apply comprehension strategies as they reflect upon and think critically about they read. So, after they read or after they have read a material, Maybe you can participate too. You can uh, get engaged with that material too. Maybe you can ask your child or a learner to explain to you what is all about that story or that the message of that book. Yeah? So nature of words, according to Anderson and Free Body in 1981, so we have the different exposures. And when we are exposed to something, we gain experience. We gain experiences. And with that, um, schema with that uh, previous learning we can even formulate new concepts novel concepts and learning words né? Um, all of this could be um, attained or achieved through listening and even exposure through uh, being into an environment and that we could this could be very important ingredients for us to speak no, fluently no, of the first language and even for the foreign language, for the third language or even multi-language that, uh, that uh, we will be using in our classroom or in our home, right? Okay, so there are four cliffing systems in reading. Graphophonic cues, graphophonic cues, which means graph, no? maybe in the form of the symbols, uh, the images, uh, graphical presentations. Schematic cues, yun na nga, no? the previous knowledge will be hinted. Yeah? This will be a backup knowledge for you to understand a novel one. Semantic is the meaning of the word, no? the semantics, vocabulary through vocabulary, context clues, and the like. No? There are many actually uh, strategies in order for us to have this full grasp of vocabulary and even to have the semantic cues. And then syntactic cues, which means then the arrangement of the words. No? So we know that um, through having the arrangement of the words, uh, uh, we understand the, the meaning also of the whole text. Okay, what about this? This is fragment. There are uh, actually uh, predicates in this construction. However, there are no doers of the action. There's no uh, subject in this particular statement no? or vice versa. Okay, start with the whole text. Okay, so whole text, learning with the text, learning through, learning about the whole written text. No? So um, the whole text, start with the whole text. And then by that, you focus on knowledge about the parts of language that may be useful for reading and writing. So you go to part, meaning whole part to whole. No? So WPW, okay? So after having the part, the detalle, no, the, the details of a certain text, learning about how the parts, textual fix, features of language function in written text, okay, about the parts of language, um, you go back, you return to whole text for application and practice. So learning to apply that. Uh, what lesson have you um, gained or have you learned from the story that you have just read? Okay, I remember my child has this uh, storytelling about the four wives. 
So after reading that, I asked him, oh, my, my, my son, oh, Nak, what lesson have you got? No, have, you, have you learned? Uh, did you get? No, have you gotten from that story? Then he said, it's better to have four wives than I. No. So you have to process, of course. You have to process um, the, that application and practice no? that the child has learned already from the material that he or she has read. Okay. So we have next. Okay, there is what we call the four-prong approach in reading. Yeah? So as the child develops um, his skills in reading, decoding, reading comprehension, um, teachers, educators, especially those reading specialists, reading enthusiast teachers, uh, have found out, no? particularly uh, Professor Basilisa Manhit of the College of Education, UP Diliman, no? he has initiated and even invented this kind of approach. Um, she called this one as four-pronged approach. This is actually a holistic literature-based approach to the teaching of reading and language. Through this method of sharing literature, vocabulary is developed, attention span is lengthened, listening comprehension is honed, and critical thinking applied daily becomes a habit. Yeah, so it's a good approach and it's proven already. And up to now, even when we have this kind of um, education, uh, the new normalcy of education, others through their Moodle still have this four-pronged approach. Okay, so what are those four-pronged uh, or four prongs? Uh, the four prongs are first prong, developing genuine love for reading, GLR. Uh, so it's very important that the child understands why he or she is reading such material, why reading is so important, right? And when you have developed that passion to read, that genuine love for reading, I'm telling you, the child herself will be making ways in order to grab books or in order to scan something in order for him to feed that thirst and quest for reading something yeah? because he believes or the child will be believing that that is a very important key for him to learn more, right? Okay, procedure for story reading and lacking of difficult words, yeah? motivation, motive question. Um, do you think blah, 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 blah? So questions like those, now leading questions, motivating questions, okay? So in the story, um, like this, no? and the four wives, maybe you can have, do you think it's very important to have four wives? Why do you think the merchant has these four wives? Now, what's the context of that? Because Nanai, um, my child answers, because Nanai, um, this is a story about a merchant who is a Muslim who is um, allowed to have four wives. So what? is all about uh, the the first wife what is the characteristic so you can maybe unlock words maybe who is the merchant what is that first wife um you can guide that that uh, moment especially that the child is having a very um initial part no? a very critical part also because that is a preliminary part Second prong, developing comprehension and critical thinking skills, discussion techniques, graduate psychological unfolding uh, GPU. No? So psychological unfolding, they mention ordinary, intensive engagement activities, which means then that you are guiding a child no? through uh, having all of those engagement activities, fun field activities. Hindi naman yung boring talaga na nagbabasa lang. No? Of course, at first, we have different pictures, na, and then later, we remove the pictures, and then maybe at this time, bigger font muna, no? mga big books or whatever. Okay, so um, ways in order for the child to actually engage and be involved. Third prong, development of oral language and correct use of grammatical structure. Yeah, so this is what we call gold, presentation lesson, dialogue, presentation exercise, and even assimilation. Okay? And the uh, fourth prong, it's now the transfer stage. Yeah? Phonics approach, other creative transfer skill of learning. You can have a performance based, maybe uh, based on the text that he or she is reading, the learner is reading. You can have a particular activity that ignites the learning of the child, right? So a mere appraisal or 
assessment na, um, with the learning of the child. So we have the four prongs as I asked what I have mentioned a while ago, genuine law for reading, critical thinking, mastery of the structures of the Filipino and even English language, and transfer stage. I hope that this four-pronged approach will be um, not only be imbibed by our learners, but even will be used by any reading uh, or any teacher, reader teacher, now as an approach or a technique in developing reading skills of our students. There is also the what we call barongko approach. Na? So comprehension is actually um, refers to understanding the words or words. And uh, comparing that one to decoding, we only decode, we only read by sound or by mnemonics, na? the words of a particular text. However, decoding is nothing. No, it's um, not really comprehending at all if you don't grasp the gist of uh, the text or a material. No? So in Maronko approach, um, this is actually um, shifting something like uh, in the sounds. If we used to have na ma, no? or we used to um, kung anong bigas ang siyang, kung anong basa ang siyang bigas, parang ganyan. Um, in this Maronko approach, we have to have, instead of ma, we need to have really the sound m. Instead of pa, we need to have p, p no? ba. Instead of have to have that very Pinoy style, no? we need to have the p sounds. Okay, so we have that now as a kind of approach or approaches in learning um, how to read and to improve reading. Assumptions about learning for understanding. Learning is goal-oriented. We know that it's uh, purpose-oriented, purpose-driven. No? In reading, these goals are to construct meaning and to regulate learning. So we need to understand and let our students, our learners understand that there is really a goal there are really goals objectives and purposes while we are learning or even while we are reading learning is the linking of new information to prior knowledge very important when you have that prior knowledge previous knowledge and when you learn something new you can create there is a power of creation and even recreation no? and that invention and that innovation and that even renovation uh, could be very possible in the part of the students and this is one of the characteristics of being creative right Next, learning involves organizing information. Yeah? So as we know that we need to organize information in order for us to be understood. Learning is the acquisition of cognitive and metacognitive structures, of course. Nah? Learning occurs in phases, yet it is non-linear. It is not actually structured. Nah? Although we have in language, we have actually, we start with the sounds, we start, and then we have the recognition of the letters, then we have the meaning, the syntactic, nah? and we have the uh, discourse, no? uh, and uh, we needed to have this uh, communication or communicative uh, strategies. No? Um, it's not linear, actually, no? when we have this learning. Ah, it's not linear. Sometimes we go on that higher level, and then later, no? parang um, deductive information or deductive process now we start with a very big information and then later we analyze with the details learning is influenced by cognitive development now before they begin to read activate the prior that prior knowledge background build more background knowledge by refining and extending the schemata schemata theory by um Bare, no, kanina, help students make connections between what they already know and the news ideas they encounter in reading. And that um, having those processes in establishing connections, guiding the students, you can have a very good question uh, processes, right? Uh, you guide the students through having a very relevant questions related, of course, to the reading or the text uh, the child reads. Okay, or the, the child read, no? or the child or the learner uh, reads. Effective comprehension strategies. No? So we are now in comprehension strategies. Actually, there are many multiple strategies um, are actually available in the internet and even in the books, no? developmental reading books and even um, 
shall we say, regional reading books. However, whatever strategy you can make, you can have eclectic strategy. What will be the strategy that is affected to my uh, my children or my learners may not be the same strategies, but maybe we can share something. Why not try this one? Uh, so it's up also, it's very relative also while we are considering relevance, right? Okay, so we have reread the text, activate prior knowledge, use context clues, infer meaning, think aloud, summarize the story, locate keywords, make predictions, yeah, and use word attack, attack rather, yeah, word attack strategies, reread, read. I always tell my students, I always tell my, uh, yeah, my students, when you will have uh, this let exam, there are three things that I want to share. Yeah? And these are read, reread, re re read. Yeah? Kung mayroon pang re reading, uh, which is uh, actually uh, redundant, no? yun na yun, which means then that you have to read, read, and read. Okay, visualize, use graphic organizers, evaluate understanding. So it will not end there. After you read somehow books or let somebody uh, read the book, do not um, allow no, that ending, that reading of the book as an ending. You need to navigate. You need to process no, uh, that uh, students are uh, learning. So it should be through you. It should be through you. Uh, via the module, via, of course, the digital um, non-print materials that uh, you are making or that you have just uh, read or prepared. No? Help students self-select strategies. Very important then, when the child already knows how to have uh, comprehension strategies, most likely the child also uh, employs learning strategies, no? uh, her or his own learning strategies. Okay, so we have also this one before reading, we have different no, our, um, comprehension strategies. Set the purpose, think about background again and again, objectives of um, that reading activity needed to be established. Do not let the child think. What is really this for? No? Why is teacher giving me this? And I think I don't need this. And it's not actually relevant to what I am learning and reading this time. No? So um, he or she needs to see the purpose or the objectives. Huh? Think about the background, knowledge, preview the text, and of course, ask questions. Good questions, which really entail good answers, right? So what do you do according to the graphics here before you start reading a new book with your class? I use a pre-reading strategy, and that is very good. Huh? So there are many pre-reading activities or strategies. Okay, look for headings. Maybe you can let uh, the child uh, describe the title of the book, no? consider the title or even the graphics there in the book, look for pullouts, read the abstract, look at the author's name, review the reference list no? for images. There are many actually ways no? in order for you to ignite comprehension uh, while the child is reading such particular book or uh, material. Okay, and the next one is vocabulary preview. No? So we have here the vocabulary, tall, short, Okay, example of uh, antonyms, married, single, handsome, ugly. So we have that. So pre-assessment of vocabulary. Um, and lacking difficulties before reading the whole text or before having the discussion is very important. Yeah? So you lead first the, the children in order for them to have an idea on the meanings of the words. And uh, we have this, no? pre-assess vocabulary, use results to plan for previewing and preview critical vocabulary. Okay, so the use of graphical or structural organizer uh, really helps too. Yeah? Sometimes it could be very monotonous and very boring if we have all of those texts. We need also to have a very creative way, no? creative presentation, okay, through a graphical way or structural way. So these are actually strategies in order to organize the thoughts no, of a particular topic 
no, to be given to a child. So the graphic organizers could be in uh, unlike and difference, the Venn diagram, cause and effect. Now maybe you have the fishbone structure, uh, puzzle, problem, and solution. There are many actually graphic organizers, uh, styles or designs. You can even make your own as a teacher, right? Okay, and this will somehow ignites uh, excitement in the part of the pupils or the learners. Why? Because um, they forget, they will somehow uh, forget that they are reading something na punong-puno ng mga words, but in a very graphical way. No? So look at this. Maybe um, mapping, no? you can have Venn diagram and the like, kahit ano, no? to organize the thoughts and even the ideas of the child uh, before even and after, you can still have after uh, reading the text. Okay, student-centered study strategies. It's very important then that uh, the student should be the at the nuclear part. No? So the student should be uh, there at the center. Ika nga, no? So we are only the guide in a side. No? So uh, in opposite to be the sage on a stage. Okay, remember that students need um, to have this. No? We need to have, of course, plan and let our students be engaged and we need to monitor the progress of our students and maybe if our plan doesn't work effectively then we can adjust no that is why it is again cyclical how to respond to students needs very important then is to know and to evaluate to assess the needs of the students what do we want students to know understand and be able to do how do we know students are learning so this could be leading questions that should pop in our mind in order for us to say something no? in order for us to that something is of course the improvement uh, of the child no? uh, not only towards reading but even comprehension towards uh, imbibing the skill of creativity no? and we have um, critical learning skills no? and metacognitive reading skills Okay, we have also another, or there are actually many um, approaches or strategies. PQRST, hindi talaga yan makakalimutan kasi nandyan yan sa alphabet. No? PQRST, what are these? Preview, skim and scan the text to get the gist. Question, ask yourself questions about what you have read in order for... Um, not only to have that motivation, but of course to evaluate if you learn, no? uh, if the child learns about um, the reading or the text that he is or she is using or reading. Dapat mayroon siyang mga self-question. No? Bakit, bakit, bakit? Or maybe how, how, how? Okay, read. Find the answers to your questions as you read carefully. So, of course, when you post the questions, you will be the one to discover that question. But, of course, uh, the child, if he needs really uh, more knowledgeable others, the MKO or the teachers, then you have to be ready in order to address these questions. Summarize what you read in your own words. No? Our students nowadays, even in college, simply cop copy cut, no? Cop cut and paste or have that hodgepodge uh, from one source to the other no or having that patch writing no remember it's not good no copywriting is at stake right plagiarism okay let us uh, teach our students how to own now, those words or how to own the idea in their own words of expression no? the idea is there no and maybe with that idea that you have learned, out of those previous or learned knowledge, um, new knowledge, previous plus new knowledge, they could recreate, they could create something in their own way of presentation, in their own way of understanding the words, in their own way of conveying the meaning of uh, a particular text. Then maybe test, no? test yourself. Okay, they could have maybe questions and then they're the one to construct the sentences, I mean the questions, and they will be the one to provide the answers. Okay, 5R. Okay, no? so we have overview, key, key ideas, read, record, recite, review, and reflect. So, um, 
tell them to tell you or to share the overview of the text that we are reading. What are those key ideas that they have gotten or that they got? What striking lines from the story did you get? And how do these lines affect you as a reader or as, as a person? Nah? So you're going to um, somehow tickle their minds about this nah, through these strategies. And then PQ for our reading strategy, preview, uh, question, read, reflect, recite, review. No? So almost the same. They're only having different names. And uh, we have also record, review, survey, question, read, respond. No? So uh, SQ for ours. No? SQ for ours. Okay. So uh, they might be in different names. However, their purpose of having this strategy is the same. Yeah. So and their way and procedure, um, ways and procedures are quite the same. And of course, they are hitting that this will somehow now yeah, improve the reading comprehension and reading uh, abilities of uh, the learners through having this learner strategies. Okay. Uh, we have predict, visualize. Question, connect, identify, and fear, evil weight. PQR, again, no? Re review, question, uh, read, record, uh, recite, review, reflect. I Even up to now, I have this, what we call record. No? So when I read something and I am touched with these lines or maybe uh, my attention is stricken with this, no? I keep on having that one in my notepad no? or in my notebook. No? So maybe quotations or whatever that, uh, uh, that struck my attention, maybe a formula of life success, whatever, no? a teaching way or whatever that really motivated me to um, think something. Ah, that is why pala, ganyan, ganyan. No? So maybe you can also teach that one to our um, readers, to our learners. Okay, so we know that um, understanding, of course, the domains of readings uh, will help us no? um, be very efficient and be very effective in our uh, reading. No? The main idea, facts and details, understanding sequence, recognizing cause and effect, comparing and contrasting, making predictions, word meaning and context, drawing conclusions and making inferences, fact and opinion. Our students are learners need to separate, uh, need to discriminate from facts, from opinion, from what is correct, from wrong, no? Ika nga, from what is a true news or a correct news from the fake one. No? So, so that our students will not um, or will have this uh, critical mind to decipher and to discriminate which one is not true and which one is based on research and true. Identifying author's purpose and with the use of figurative language. No? Uh, do you think uh, the flowers really wink at me? No, so uh, that is personification. Uh, my son, uh, sorry if I always um, have this example to my son because I am in college and uh, um, my son is only grade four. That is why I kept and I pick up all of his experiences, particularly on the reading journey that he has. No? So he said that, um, uh, does the flower dance or does the grass wink at you? What does it mean? So that is a figurative language, right? So it means that personifying something, inanimate object, blah, blah, blah. So you have to uh, explain to that. Summarizing. Uh, so napakasakit sa ulo. Make a summary. Per se writing uh, with this article, with this reading. But our students, though college already, have to hodgepodge. Nah? So it should not be. Okay, um, yes, then we have this one, no? acrostic uh, meaning of the word read, read, explain, ask, and decide. We have also like this, uh, some of which are already mentioned, inferring, making connections, visualizing, synthesizing. Aside from summarizing, we need also to teach our children our learners to synthesize something. No? So, yun na yun, combining information from the text, or from previously learned concepts to a newly inquired something and create your own. Ah, okay. Determining importance, questioning. The art of questioning is very important. I like this no, strategy. Teach with laughter. 
Ika nga, be an eagle eye. No, this could be a learner strategy in reading too. Look at the picture for a clue to help with the word. No? So, ang bata, very young pa, no? when he sees or she sees an apple, hindi pa marunong magbasa, no? he would uh, identify an apple. But with no picture na, no? what happens to that eagle eye? Okay, lips the fish. Get your lips ready. Say the first few sounds. You let them, no, that is actually for beginner reader, uh, you let them uh, imitate the sounds correctly. Stretch your snake. Look at the letters in the word. Stretch the sounds out slowly. Go back and say the sounds all together. No? So, um, dance. Okay, you have to exaggerate now for the child to really get into the particular sound. Chunky monkey, look for little words, word endings, and word chunks that you know. No? So, little words, and even um, the word endings. No? Uh, if there will be L-Y that is adverb already, I-N-G, gerand, or sometimes uh, with um, uh, verb form, no? it will fa or with auxiliary verb, it will function as a verb. Okay, skip a frog. Skip the word. Read to the end of the sentence. Hop back and read it again. Now, sometimes you will be having maze, maze test. No, uh, you remove a particular word of a sentence or an article or text and let the child fill out those words. Now, um, if the child really understands well, then he could have a very good vocabulary. Flippy dolphin. Try the short vowel sound, then flip, and try the long vowel sound. It's very important that the child also can initiate, initiate you know, the short vowel and the uh, long vowel sound. You know? um, what's the difference of uh, um, the sounds? You know? As we're going to have the uh, bake, you know? uh, as we're going to have the uh, big, you know? as we're going to have the three, three, no, as we're going to have two, two. No? So it, it will be homonyms, for example. Uh, it will be explained. Uh, it will be imitated by the child too. Trying lion. Still struck? Try your strategies. No? So you try your own strategies. Um, when I was um, elementary, I used to have all of those concepts. The first letter, I think you do the same too. Now, even in college, uh, during exam, we used to have our own learner strategy in order for us to remember things, especially during exam, right? In order for us to remember the concepts easily. Help for kangaroo. Ask for help, but only after you have tried all. No? So do not, of course, um, deprive the child for your assistance, for your help. No? Okay, we are readers. You can have cafe, comprehension, accuracy, fluency, and expanding vocabulary. Okay, you can make your own strategy too. If I will be asking you this time, what strategy are you going to have? Maybe you can use your own name. No? So for example, Anna. Anna means, no? how are you going to use that Anna um, in relation to reading strategies? Jean or John, how are you going to have that one uh, in associating with reading concepts? Okay, actually, we can devise our own reading learners' uh, strategies, and we can teach our learners to do the same too. Okay, we have here clothes. Gaano ka clothes? Okay, C is check for unknown words for unusual or foreign language, and that is actually vocabulary. Now, L, look for keywords, for how key details are provided, no? and the meaning and reasoning. Genres, whether it could be expository, narrative, informative, observe, no? and study text structures. Sequence process, chronological time order, examine. No? So we have the figurative language. How is uh, simile different from metaphor? No? So my idiomatic expressions and the like. Okay. So we have here the checklist also uh, will help the teacher no, in employing those strategies. Before reading, activate, predict. During reading, check and ask questions. Infer meanings too. No? So what kind of conclusions can you draw uh, after reading, after knowing the story? Can you guess something? What will happen to Maria when uh, his parents or his father know that he she is not actually answering the module. After reading, review, focus, summarize, 
Now we have uh, respond. Okay. So this actually three important phases of reading. Uh, see to it that each phase you will be having different reading strategies. Okay, so we have the DRTA or the Directed Reading Activity. I will explain that one as we will be having the RTA um, later. Okay, so while or during reading, you have to ask questions, even have or initiate immediate uh, oral feedback, timelines and charts. What am I thinking? Uh, so maybe you can have um, situational questions. If you were um, a candidate running for uh, mayor um, post this time, what are your platforms? If you were uh, the, the secretary of the Department of Education and the like. Okay, so we have now um, follow up pre and during reading activities. Have students talk about what they read. They have to collaborate. They have to um, actually, um, uh, shall we say, connect. No, they have to share what they have read. No? It's very good to have that um, freedom wall or discussion wall in any app that you are using. Um, very exciting no? to know that our students, when they will be reading something or even movie review, no? Kaya lang, uh, most of this are K-drama. No? They're very excited to share what they have learned and what they have watched. No? And I, I have fun in reading those comments no? in my students. Okay, so we have here, uh, yeah, I told you a while ago, let them ask somebody, that's Jackie, puzzle maker, letter writer, uh, cartoonist, detective, songwriter, judge, no? acting somebody in solving problem. No? So if you were a designer, how are you going to, if you were no? a pedagogue or a curriculum designer, how are you going to, um, how are you going to propose such um, curriculum in order for the students to learn better than this time? Okay, so Take note before reading, during reading, and after reading. You have to have different activities with corresponding strategies. And of course, uh, there you have uh, your intentions, your objectives uh, to be achieved no, in each activity. Okay, so the RTA is very familiar. I think you have uh, heard that one too. No? This is developed um, by Russell Stoffer in 1969. However, until now, it's still no, uh, of great use, making predictions while they are reading. No? So I'm going to stop. What do you think will happen to Huan when um, he will not um, get that by Yabas, uh, by himself, because he is just lying down and wait for that um, guava to fall down on the ground. Yeah? So you make predictions. Elicit students' prior knowledge, encourage students to monitor their comprehension, and it sets the purpose for reading. Right? Okay. There will be the uh, selection of a text. Now, it's very important that the text also suits to the interest and even the level of difficulty of uh, the students. Now, so it's not that uh, out of relevance and significance to their uh, interest. Now, so for example, while they are still grade three, imuna um, gipa, you are already giving uh, such material all about romantic. Uh, stories and the like. No? So it should be within the sphere, no, the parameter of the reading interest of a certain child. Have students read the title of the text. What do you think? Why do you think this is the title of the story? No? And even you can have also that one as um, after. No? What is the implication of the title? Um, Animal Farm by George Orwell. Why do you think blah, 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 no? uh, Nick Joaquin in the story, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so uh, what about uh, why, um, what do you call this? Why did the author title this particular story? In what sense did he uh, mean that there is really the world is an apple no? by Tolentino? Okay, have students make predictions, uh, read a section of the text, and then they are going to uh, collaborate. They're going to interact. No? There could be, an, an, uh, shall we say, affirmative uh, group. There will be 
uh, shall we say, negative group, no? a sort of or a kind of debate, maybe. You can pose a situational question and let them um, exchange their opposing and even affirming ideas. No, why not? Continue steps four and five. When students have finished reading, ask questions again to promote thinking and discussions. So sample questions, uh, questions will not be only for literal or low-level questions. It should be, of course, questions that elicit critical thinking and, of course, um, high-level questions, hot, no? higher order thinking skills. Okay, so this is an example of worksheet of the RTA. Okay, so there is also an approach or strategy called Orton Gillingham. Uh, so uh, this is a powerful instructional approach to teaching reading and spelling with these key features. Multisensory, uh, the child really has to experience no, in manipulating maybe a certain uh, rubrics, no, a certain box no, that you will not only tell the child that uh, the lemon is sour, but let the child teach. Uh, let the child uh, taste also no? um, what's uh, the flavor of that sour taste of a lemon. No? So do not simply let the child say jump, but let him or her jump. No? Sequential concepts are taught in a logical way, in a well-planned sequence. Incremental, each lesson carefully builds upon the previous lesson. That is why we have motivation questions, we have drills, we have even review of the previous discussion. Na? Cumulative, constant and consistent review of previously taught concepts is provided. Again, uh, ayan, no? um, napaka-connected niya doon sa incremental. Yes, individualized. The unique needs of each student are met. No? So those students uh, who are maybe good in, shall we say, making posters, pub mats, publication materials, maybe you can let them have actually uh, those poster making activities. What about uh, composition, songwriting? No? So whatever. No? So individualized according to the needs and even to the abilities of the children. Based on phonograms, English is simplified by teaching letters and letter combinations known as uh, phonograms. Yung sinasabi ko a while ago, if your name will be uh, made for a certain reading activity, what will be uh, those? No? So, for example, Anna, how are you going to have that one? Analyze novel, um, analyze novel things, analyze situations. Um, Conceptualize novel things. A. Ano pa yung A? No? So, learn to have that aptitude towards reading. Okay. So, we have that. Explicit. Students are taught exactly what they need to know in a clear and straightforward manner. No? So, it should be direct. It should be clear. Crystal clear. It should be having that clarity. No? So, not um, rounding around the bush. Okay, beating around the bush. Other strategies in reading in the context areas. We have the so-called clink and clank. Okay, so these are actually clinks are actually the things that the students or the learners understand in your discussion, for example, or the text. The clank maybe are those difficult words or difficult concepts that the children or the learners uh, find it in a text or in your lesson. So, for example, when I am teaching about uh, the elements of uh, literature or elements of a short story, maybe clank, what are those, no? The students commonly understand certain character, characters, characterization, and the like. The clank may be um, uh, the styles of the author is quite different from them. How to digest, uh, how to actually detect uh, the styles of the author. No? So language, nouns, verbs, kasi nga, very basic. No? Pagdating dun sa adverbs, even prepositions, ang hirap na, no? interjections and the like. Science, uh, concentrated, matter, clang, saturated, diluted, no? even social studies, dictator, uh, plebeian for clang, yung mga, uh, which means then that this clang are those easily understood and the clang somehow needs wider or added time in order to have more discussion or further explanation. No? Sa math, ayan. I think ako wala akong clink sa math. No? Halos lahat clank because I'm not that good in um, numerical skills. Okay. 
cell. Circle seat cover. This is one um, activity or strategy also no, that you can um, use no, in having your uh, reading activity. So um, you can have three actually groups in a class and then one will have the uh, center, uh, two will, will have the uh, cover a seat and then three will have the cover no? so they could have actually the discussion on for example uh, Soxai fall of Ro Rome discuss text including reasons for the fall of Rome and the language arts parts of speech and the like no? so they will be exchanging and they will be presenting what are their ideas um, in a form of assessment use teacher observation of information covered during discussion correct answers on worksheets uh, should be provided and if there are miscues, misgivings, the teachers should actually process also. Yeah? Maybe not direct correction of the uh, words or the misgivings of the children. However, you can um, process them. You can scaffold them in order for them to realize what are those uh, mistaken words or uh, wrong words that they have used or wrong answers. Okay. Uh, jigsaw uh, pattern or activity you know this right okay allow students to work with their peers and to learn information from one another so we have actually three groups the home group expert group and um, yeah the, the home group now so we have breakout report and discuss uh, it depends upon you how many groups actually you can have uh, three or four or five groups. This strategy allows for all members of the class to receive information about an entire section in a text. Actually, they will be reading the same text. It is a collaborative strategy that ensures uh, the participation of all students. Okay, so we have this one. Um, the teams then split up and find the students from the other teams. No? So um, they will be exchanging team members in order to share something that they have uh, shared. No? Um, when uh, the first group has uh, this uh, kind of sharing in their groups. Determine students' level of comprehension by the correct number of responses in a quiz. No? So for assessment, it is suggested that there could be quiz afterwards. No? So um, let us see if they will really they really understand uh, those um, concepts. Then we have partner prediction. This strategy gives students the opportunity to work with their peers and make predictions. It's very then important to guess something. And it's very important that the child develops this prediction skill about a story. Yeah? And uh, when he has or she has these predictions, um, maybe there could be wild guessing. There could be out of the blue guessing or guesses or predictions. However, you still, as a teacher, need to process those. Now, why do you think um, you have thought about this? Now, why do you think you guess about this? Uh, why do you think this will happen next? Okay, so for this, you can have this for language arts, example lang yan, a topic, no? social studies, and then for uh, science about plants, for example. What will happen to, um, or can you tell me the process of photosynthesis? No? What will happen to metamorphosis of um, that cocoon into a beautiful butterfly? Okay, so we have this. Yes, reciprocal teaching also is a very good strategy. Allows students to begin to work together and to teach each other as they take over the discussion. So, for example, uh, first the teacher or first group will be the teacher and uh, the other group will be the, uh, shall we say, the audience or shall we say the group of students. And then they will exchange or by twos or by dyad. Now, I will be the teacher first. You're going to listen to me. You can interact uh, if you want. Then um, later you will be the teacher and I will be your student. Then we can have uh, interaction with a certain topic given to us. Now, and the most common, still very effective, even a to this time, thank pair share. No? So you thank maybe for one minute during class, before class, no? with pen and paper or laptop, you can have an activity. You think about this. What do you think? No? KWL, for example, um, 
know what the, uh, know or um, tell me what you know and uh, what you want to learn and what you have learned. Yeah, so uh, mga activities like those. Turn to your neighbor, walk across the room. So there will be situation uh, and then you will be having by two. Now, or you can have sinking boat, uh, sinking boat of eight. No? Uh, why do you think sinking boat or the boat is sinking? You have only uh, two um, peers or you have only two loved ones or family members to be with you why do you think no uh, you need to have your mother instead of your father no you need to have your uh son instead of your husband okay and then share okay then uh, the whole class with another group will be having uh writing or even speaking activities whether it could be product based or performance based activities Okay, so we have this. I have explained this one already. Okay, so I think, um, yes, although um, I wanted to have this, uh, what do you call this, um, input sharing. However, I like also the sample test taking. No? So supposedly we will be using this class point uh, of multiple choice. We have a class code. If you're listening to me and you can grab your other gadget, you can actually go to a uh, class point and join. Now we have the code over here at the right side, 63544, uh, if you can. Okay, so but um if you can't then it's okay no? so in taking the test uh, in taking uh let no, or be left um as it is um we have uh, this what we call content based and even i think chad also um encompasses the what we call maybe the performance uh situational based questions no so not only content based not only knowledge based but even maybe yeah situational uh questions are really many items in the licensure examination so although it could be very helpful to have this concepts and all of this grounded knowledge or this foregrounding knowledge and foundational knowledge about uh, the topic or the different subjects, whether prof ed, uh, whether within your specialization, general education, okay. it's also very important. That is why you don't have to memorize. You have to understand. You have to internalize instead of memorizing. While it helps that memorization, rote memorization could help you. However, while your memory blocks na, and betrays you, you can still have the internalization. Um, and of course analysis na? so it helps your content uh, based knowledge will back you up now in order for you to analyze something okay so uh yes um what time what time is it okay I think it's already 4.42. Yes. Which of the following activities will best achieve this goal? Um, I think nobody... May I see if somebody is joining? Okay. This is a class point. Now, maybe you can have the class code if you want. Okay. I'm just having, as I said, the sample of that uh, content base. Okay. So... I just uh, closed the submission. Okay, so this reading theory depicts reading beginning with the cognitive processes occurring in the reader's mind as he or she reads. This is also called concept-driven processing. No? So if you cannot actually join the class point with this class uh, code, maybe you can um, have uh, that one as a reaction. No? Maybe in your mind, you can answer that one in your mind. Okay, and the answer is top down. Okay, because bottom up is data driven processing, right? Okay, um, yes, reading the content area aims to help students make sense of the text and negotiate meaning. So, this is not um, having the content or the knowledge alone, but there is already an application of what you have understood. 
right? Okay, so which of the following activities will best achieve this goal? Have the reading of the text be done at home. Make them read silently. Allow students to ask questions. Remember, help students make sense of the text and negotiate meaning. Practice oral reading. Okay, what do you think is the answer? You can have that one in mind. Okay, while you are helping students make sense or have meaning of the different uh, of the text or material, you allow students to ask questions, right? Okay, nobody? Okay, join? Okay, okay, so yes. This one is actually for true or false. Now, I have actually a quick poll here, true or false. But you cannot uh, answer if you cannot join my class code uh, or class point. So, with the true or false, okay, we have here um, this activity. You can maybe answer that one later. So, with this um, true or false, okay. ZPD and scaffolding is actually the key ideas of Rousseau, true or false? Okay, this is actually false. Nah? As we know that this is Vygotsky. Nah? So uh, what I can learn with help, knowledgeable others, the MKO, technology and tools. These are assistive tools in order to um, navigate, nah? in order to, shall we say, process also learning. He wrote eloquently on education, arguing the children learn best by interacting freely with their environment. Rousseau, nah? this is the concept of Rousseau. And with this, sensory motor, pre-operational, concrete operational, formal uh, operational. Okay, these are all, of course, the concepts of Piaget. Okay, so cognitive no, uh, learning theory. And we have schema. No? So our own culture, we need to understand our background, our experiences, our previous experiences. No? So um, this is, uh, the proponent of this is Rene. Okay, so I think it's already 4.50, okay? These are my references on my uh, discussion, okay? Um, I just want to add this one as a very realistic evaluation of our, shall we say, not really evaluation, but discussion, sharing uh, of what our department is actually initiating in order to somehow uplift the performances of our learners uh, in terms of reading and even in learning the um, tools, uh, uh, the, the, the main tools, uh, the different learning tools, such as uh, English, science, and uh, mathematics. So in fairness, and with all appreciation to our government and um, to our department, the Department of Education, particularly on having the developmental reading, uh, they have launched, again, another um, program for reading. Hamon, Bawat Bata Bumabasa, no? yung Bawat Bata Bumabasa, particularly in this time of pandemic, that reading should not stop, no? that a certain child, regardless of race, whatever, no? uh, regardless of any inhibiting factors, needs to continue his education his or her learning and his or her opportunities to read, right? Before they had, I can read and play. No? So play is also included here as to ignite also fun field activities. No? And um, yes, uh, they are learning while they are also enjoying something. So the different worksheets somehow elicit uh, motivation and interest uh, in the part of the children to read because they look something, uh, they will be looking forward uh, for something kasi nga very enjoyable yung mga activities. Okay, they have even e-carp no? as part of their brigada before. Every child, a reader program. So, um, yun nga, no? parang bawat bata bumabasa. So, uh, no child will be left behind. Everybody, every child should. No, uh, be really a reader, not only a reader, but an effective and efficient reader. So when he or she is an effective and efficient reader, then um, she will be embracing those uh, 21st century skills. No? And we know what are those, no? collaborative skill, creative skill, uh, we have communicative skill, we have um, uh, 
uh, critical, being critical thinker, no? and hitting those hot higher order thinking skills. Okay, and uh, what is very important also, we have mentioned a while ago, the emotional, no? uh, the, not only the IQ will be also given importance, but even the EQ, particularly as of this time. Children, learners, uh, young adults even, we, no? we are actually adjusting emotionally and even all aspects, financially and the like. Yeah? And we need to guide, we need to um, guide to process our children because this will somehow adversely affect uh, or this will have an effect, an effect to the learning of the students. Yeah? So there is a, what we call adversity quotient. We need also to teach our children to be resilient in all of the adversities. We never actually expect uh, this uh, pandemic to happen. Nobody is prepared with this. Now, even the most creative and the most critical thinker and the, the most uh, technologically savvy individual have not, um, shall I say, predicted this one. No? So um, we need to uh, capacitate our child to be also very resilient and to be, uh, shall we say, very strong, should have a strong emotional foundation, whatever adversities, no? amidst adversities. Okay, we have, uh, the department also had uh, drop everything and read, no? so um, cell phone, drop everything no? and read. What if um, the reading material is in the cell phone? No? Actually, there's no problem about uh, digitized uh, or non-printed forms, as long as you Parents, no? as our MKO in the class home, um, in our homeschooling, we teachers, you future teachers, the frontliners of education, we need to guard also our students um, with this uh, right use, no? responsible use of not only social media, but even the gadget, the technology itself. No? Remember the technology or the gadget is there to assist us. It's not actually to harm us. However, it's uh, sad to note that there are or there were pupils and learners who were actually uh, depressed, who were actually having anxiety uh, because of uh, the excessive use of the gadget. No? And it has um, a harmful effect to our even to our health. Remember, tayo nga, di ba? A whole day na Zoom, whole day na uh, stream yard or whatever, na listening to the different um, speakers. We will be having or we are experiencing the, what we call digital or Zoom fatigue. Yeah? We are having this anxiety sometimes because of what is happening. But with the right uh, attitude, with the right, of course, knowledge, uh, enough knowledge, um, not only with this reading, even in all aspects. Now, I am always having this in all aspects in life because reading is uh, a very significant uh, element na, in uh, the progress of human's life. Okay, so reading challenge. Uh, let me uh, bring you again the reading literacy status of our country you know, in the year 2018 that we have, uh, we had actually you know, one we we were actually in the lower part lower rank no, in that uh pisa um there is actually performance international student assessment right okay um not only in reading literacy see we are having um what they call this 340 points only an average of 487 a difference of 27 points so ikang hindi tayo nakapasa filipino students also rank low in pisa for mathematics and science with 353 points and 357 points so this made us sad no? um the irony is that the world believes that the filipino learners Philippines, no? Philippines, our dear country, is actually very good in learning the target languages is English, the global, global language. However, when we had this assessment, we rank low. No? Uh, isn't that an irony? Okay, so um, with all of due respect with the government and so with the educators, um, we initiated something. We doubled our efforts in order to mend this one. But maybe there are still more to do and more efforts to uh, go now before we can have not only to tap, 
but even to perform well. Kahit man lang yan lang muna. Okay? So, and of course, one of the challenges now with this uh, new normal, uh, as you see, there were many complaints. There were many actually, um, shall I say, heresies, complaints, and everything. Name them all about the modules and the like. No? Kaya nga, I was, uh, again, um, stricken with the post in the FB, na? mga Pinoy pick-up lines, uh, mga hugot lines, mga memes. Okay? Kawawa naman ang ating mga teachers. They tried really their best. However, um, everything is a learning process for us. We'll learn uh, being with you learners, being with the other uh, cohorts of teachers, being with the curriculum designers, in having our scheme to be better. Na? So sabi doon sa post, ko ka ba? Bakit? Na? Kasi yung scores ko sa module, palagi na lang zero, hindi talaga wala talagang sakto no? in Visayan or even in Tagalog, no? sakto means tama. Okay, so kok sakto, Coca-Cola sakto. And then we have module ka ba? Bakit? Kasi ang hirap mong sagutin, no? Yung mga, mga cheesy like those. However, um, this could be very funny uh, statements. However, it bites a realistic, um, yeah, reality, realistic moment in our educational sphere, in our educational landscape. And we are doing this one, no? So maybe, um, and as of this time, as pandemic turned into epidemic, um, we are not only having this new normalcy, but we have to think with the post-pandemic education, what will be the kind of education that we will be having uh, in the post-normal ikanya. Na? So, lack of reading motivation and strategies, na, uh, that is actually very true. So, how are we going to motivate an availability of gadget if we're going to have uh, non-print materials? And then kapag reading materials, wala naman doon sa bahay, na, uh, except for the module. So, it will be supplemented with author reading materials. Na? So, according to research, uh, internet offers a vast volume of information. However, there could be very what? Um, there could be drawback also that needed to be given such attention. Uh, so, um, a great deal of information online is not fact-checked or is published by a source that may not be reliable. So, there are those uh, fake news. No? So, be careful with that. And online reading is generally non-linear. Again, no? um, hindi lang books, hindi lang newspaper. Ang dami nating uh, reading applications, no? ang mga e-books. Um, however, our students, our pupils could not uh, readily avail those if they have lack of technology and even gadgets right okay so while we are in the vocal world i know that uh, you know this one huh? so it seems that the world is voca volatile uncertain complex and ambiguous huh? everything is unprotected um it will easily be evaporated what is in now strategies maybe could be in now but tomorrow it will be gone huh? uncertain uh, nobody uh, knows what lies ahead now what will be our future okay so very complicated parang status sa fb very complicated um bakit kumusta yung pag-ibig mo very complicated ba din ambiguous no no clarity there's no clear um in uh, assurance how are we going to have or how are we going to solve this kind of situation so the world is really voca however the world could be addressed with a voca perceptions also with that volatility there is vision uh? with that uncertainty there is understanding with that complexity there is clarity and with that ambiguity there is agility we are agile we are able to bend we are able to flex ourselves in order to move from one state to the other we know how to understand and uh, there is a clear vision in our mind and even in our action. Na? And coupled with that, volatility, okay, virtuousness, I am um, then having these virtues that everything will be solved na? and I understand the situation. I needed to find solutions with this problem. Na? These are the problems of the readers. This could be the solutions that I will be taking. And if it's not actually uh, effective, then maybe I could try another one. Na? And then, compassion. We will be teaching with a heart. 
na and ambiguity adaptability we need to not only to be agile but very adaptive to the kind of situations that we are having okay so uh, wag na lang muna yung self assessment wala na yan okay so um, there are many cliches about uh, quotations on the significance of reading bacon once said uh, reading make it a full man uh, conference a ready man writing an exact man yeah? so if you don't know how to read we will be fooled by somebody and if you don't know how to comprehend we will be foolish in many things yeah? so, and we don't want that one to happen uh, even in our younger uh, generations so um, reading is said to be uh, not only books now refer to the books but any other printed or non-print materials and this could uh, serve this will serve us our pirates loot now on treasure island this will be our gem now this will be our key to unlock many things not only to travel more places around the globe virtually na, um, on screen only but even uh, it uh, made uh, it will make us be empowered teachers in the future no you uh, our dear um, takers no in the let licensure i'm so excited uh, to welcome you hopefully no um, i don't know yet when will be the exam um, but um, we will be having a very wide uh, arms to welcome you in the department, in the commission, as uh, you will be the future uh, of our country na, um, in terms of uh, armoring, uh, shielding our education. Okay, And with that, daghang salamat sa tanan. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much for your listening my presentation. God bless everyone. Keep safe.